Go for it. I have your mind. <gasps> Hi, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Pura vida. Pura vida. <laughs> yeah. You're very welcome. We are the upcoming generation. We are the ones who are going to save the planet and who are going to make change start now. Start teaching each other and supporting each other and just continue along the road of saving our planet because that is the only option. This is Peggy Mercur. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. Yeah, pura vida. <laughs> Pura vida. Pura vida. Whoa, it's not a dream anymore. It feels like tangible, you know, and it's in my home country. I need to be there, you know, I need to be part of that. I want to be on that ship. Today, it's quite sunny. It is Saturday and the working week is over. And now I'm talking to Russell Heddo. I've been working on the ballast keel and and also in some clean energy, installed a biogas digester and be working on biochar soon as well. Yeah. So what's the story behind? How did you come here? May you tell us a little story about yeah. that? Well, I've been working with chocolate for a long time and wanted to ship chocolate by sailboat and, and felt that this would be a, a good opportunity to contribute in the same direction, same goal. And so I've been here for since November 21, so 14 months maybe, 15 months. And in that time I've done a lot of different things. I can run the sawmill, I built a roof over the boat for protection from rain and, and sun, and have been working on the ballast keel for over a month now. So that's installing 1.2 ton I-beams, one section at a time, and we've got almost three installed now. And, and I'll probably be shifting more into like clean energy work. I have a, an engineering degree in clean energy and metallurgy. So is there something in your mind and delighted your heart on the ship already? The experiences that really stand out aren't necessarily really funny. It's the ability to use the tools that we have at hand and how simple they are and how much we accomplish with them. That is really encouraging and kind of impressive to be lifting large beams with a whole team of people maybe sometimes we've had 20 people to lift the Samson post or more and working together on blocks and tackles and that that stands out as a like kind of beautiful cooperation yeah. how does your family think about this project and that you're here I think they're honestly not as necessarily concerned about the project just uh, about me and they're very encouraging and supportive and um, ready to come visit sometime. But yeah, it's the supportive family. Mm -hmm. So what's the background? Do you have sisters, brothers, uh, siblings? Yeah, my older sister, she is two years my elder and we grew up on a farm with mom and dad and my mom was a school teacher and my dad was a grain farmer so he would cultivate wheat or barley or peas or canola, lots of different crops in northern Canada and fairly far west but still in the prairies so it was in British Columbia and then I studied mostly in Vancouver and have lived on a small island in the northern Vancouver Island range so it's, um, it's boat access and I've had a couple sailboats there and worked in the shellfish industry as well as in carpentry and, and that's where I learned to sail and mostly self-taught sailor. Did you have ever have a day on the sailboat when you were thinking like oh no I can't manage to do that anymore? Yeah if I you know if I need to take time off for whatever reason we, we can and you know it, it's um we're definitely on one side encouraged to to be able to work a full week but on the other side we are people too so so if I need to take a half day off or I don't feel safe doing something there's always other people around that we can get to help. So we just bring somebody else in until it gets to a safe place and then continue on. Yeah. What makes you feel comfortable about this place? I think it's the community. So it's nice to know some of the local people because there's people from the immediate area that work here and then there's other Costa Rican people that are immediately from here are, are generally they might be from Nicaragua they might be fishermen but they're generally not university educated so there's like one almost aspect of culture right there and then there's all of the people from Costa Rica that are working here and so they've 
everybody else has been to university from Costa Rica and and then there's the group of Yardies that are mostly shipbuilding that have come and change a lot more as well and so it's um, it's a lot of being able to interact with other people and and that that's really really helpful I get a lot of support from that yeah. what's your personal motivation in life I just want to be able to support others support the earth and people in the same and I think that that partly involves kind of being calm means being able to uh, hold space so people can experience who they are which me too sometimes if I get a little overheated maybe working on a pin that doesn't want to go in or something in work is a, is struggling things happen all the time it's knowing to be able to step back and relax and to focus on the broader picture which is maybe peacefulness and calmness and and so that's what I'm working on every day and, and um, what connecting the link on sailing was about is about too is being able to realize that we probably can step a little nicer on the planet I think that everybody's quality of life in some way ends up connecting back to nature and so hopefully we can just see that as a, as a broader scope and be like ah like it's worth our time to invest in living things plants and animals and yeah what is your free time about when you finished with work at the shipyard right now I'm studying so I feel a little not quite overdone but kind of overdone I don't have a lot of free time because I'm doing the the KZV the Ankhauser course which is about eight hours of video per week and then as much studying on top of that they suggest about 20 hours so that really fills up so I just try to get some exercise and before that I've been working on some chocolate and have started begun planting with a friend on his farm some cacao and have a chocolate maker that I've brought in as well and have made a little bit of chocolate from bean to bar and and so that's my other interest is is in chocolate making and it's nice to go surfing to really get a lot out of being on a beach and surfing it's wonderful so yeah so about appreciation there is a lot of different animals i mean if you compare it to canada do you have maybe a little connection to that every day it seems like there's a new insect which is pretty cool and sometimes they're huge and sometimes they're tiny and and that's neat and the monkeys are really fun because they're cute and similar to us and the birds are singing all the time so there's when there's silence in the shipyard it's not silent it's that there's birds and insects that are audible and and that ambient sound is wonderful it's really easy to appreciate i think there's been a frogs living in my house <laughs> so the frogs are kind of they kind of symbolize change like meta metamorphosis maybe or because they grow up in the water and then they come out onto land and they transition from breathing in water to breathing air and there's been a couple frogs just inside my house I don't you know there's different ways to get in and and that's kind of neat so yeah those frogs have been and then when we went to visit a cacao farm our friend took me and the first thing that stood up it was the farmer uses fertilizer but he's You know, he's also a good businessman, so he doesn't want to use more fertilizers or chemicals than he feels payback. And the first thing we saw in the cacao kind of orchard was three different kinds of frogs in the same space. And one was bright green and black, one was red transitioning to brown, and the other one was super camouflaged, like blackish brown that you couldn't see. And so there were three distinct kinds of frogs. And that was also a really good sign, like, just to know that in that environment the things want to be there and the other one is when I came in November the first thing that stood out are what are called turkey vultures and they are large black birds no I don't think they're raptors but they are care they eat dead things and whatever they can get at and they have these ones there's two kinds here a black head and a red head and the red headed ones they I guess they migrate so that was really cool because I just left Canada and then got here and there's a welcome friend so we are surrounded by monkeys by different kinds of birds by lizards also different kinds of insects even scorpions I would say yeah yeah <laughs> did you ever experience some scorpions yeah early on when I first got here that's interesting as well because you you ask animals that bring up something in particular and um, And so in Monteverde, which I understand is 
basically the upper elevation that scorpions live in. I, I was I was stung when I first got here, and, and I've been stung another time at a friend's house up there. And and down here, I've been stung once or twice lifting up on the underside of a board. And and there's a friend who um, he just like has the scorpion running on his hands, and he puts one hand on one wrist, and the scorpion runs on to the hand that's on top of the wrist, and then he switches and just keeps it there. And so the scorpion's running, and he's switching from one hand to the other. So it's uh, not dangerous to get bitten by a scorpion? It depends on the kind, but here in Costa Rica, I don't believe there's any serious scorpions. Maybe if you're super allergic, like a bee sting, it could be a thing, because some people get stung by bees and it's, it's, it's really serious, but most people it's not, and scorpions might be the same. It hurts, but that's all. That's all, yeah. Good to know. Thank you so much for your time. Do you have some motivation which you want to share with the world? Being able to listen to one's breath sometimes is a really beautiful thing to do. Like calmness and being able to, to honor and respect other people I think is one of the biggest values that we can move forward. And in some cultures they, they really honor just children. It doesn't matter who the dad is or where they came from. It's just like there's a child, like let's take care of that child. And just to kind of yeah keep that in mind and spread that out that that's that's a really okay thing to do just support people and create calm spaces and then to be able to appreciate that is um a reward in its own right nice pura vida pura vida <laughs> hi what are you working on keel the ballast keel so i'm grinding down some washers because we're bolting the Keelson Rider, which is a steel I-beam, down through to the ballast keel, and that's about a one meter hole that's been drilled. How is this place called? We call this the wood shop. The wood shop? Yeah, we have a jointer and a chop saw and thickness planer and then the, the large uh, table saw up there, so this is what we call the wood shop. And it's kind of the original shop here, I believe. Pura Vida, good morning. Good morning, Pudaya, how are you? I'm fine, thanks, so are you? Yeah, doing good. Starting the day with some woodworking, making a distribution box for the plumbing and the drainage for the new building. That's gonna be housing for the yardies. And a workshop under it for wood and the sawmill. So right now I'm starting to do like um, what would be like a mold so then I can add some concrete and make a box on the ground for drainage. Can you tell us a little bit and explain about the buildings we are seeing here? Okay, so most of the buildings here at the shipyard, they are very rustic looking um, because we try to find the pieces of wood and take advantage of the natural shape they have already for the structure. So. Most of them look like uh, the trunks and branches of trees and just cut and put together to build the structures. Um, let's see. Now this new building, it's very nice. It's probably the nicest building we have at the shipyard. It's gonna be housing for the ladies on the top. There's three rooms, one big room that's gonna be shared with bunk beds and um, there's going to be a kitchen there, a little sink, also a bathroom with a shower. And it's really cool because we built the house around some trees that were already growing there. So a couple of the trees actually go through the house, into the rooms, into the living room, into the shower. So when the bathroom's ready, you can have a shower, but a branch of the tree goes through the room and it's very refreshing, you know, it makes you feel like you're outside. Um, yeah, we try to take and make the most out of the wood that we can get to, you know, make it as sustainable and efficient and affordable as possible, right? Why they are not on the ground? That helps to make the space cooler, right? So there's air flowing under it. So imagine like posts that come from the ground and hold the building above. Um, so that way you can also take advantage of the space under it and use it as a workshop to work with tools. Now under this new building, 
we're gonna have the sawmill that's a wood miser um, that we can cut big uh, slabs of wood with that and there's also gonna be a little workshop the sharpening station with all the tools to sharpen our tools mm -hmm. so it's a combination there are some work places on the floor I mean the shop for metal mm -hmm. the shop for wood mm -hmm. and do you have another shop yeah we have the sharpening station that's where we sharpen mostly uh, the chains for the chainsaws and some of the metal tools uh, we also have the assembly station, that's uh, where we prepare the pieces that need to be pre-assembled. For example, the huge beams that then go into the ship, we pre-assemble them um, in this station when we have to scarf them together or do s some other type of preparation for the pieces before they go inside the ship. Yeah, we got the metal shop, the carpentry workshop, and now we're going to have another woodworking station under this new building. And that's uh, essentially the workstations that are at the ground level. Everything that's housing and the offices, for example, it's elevated to help keep the space cooler. And um, lots of bugs and snakes and stuff from going inside the building. Mm -hmm. Nice, and uh, down below you can also work, hang around, sit, uh, there are different places. Yeah. Who decides uh, which building comes next? Uh, that would be Lynx, that is the technical director or construction boss. This new building is the first step, like the, um, the new improvements that, we, that he wants to make. He has a vision for a permanent, uh, more permanent structures, because at the moment most of the structures are kind of temporal, you know, that we can take apart easily in case that we have to uh, rearrange spaces. How does it come that you're here? A friend of mine was doing a, a volunteering with Astillero Verde, that is the uh, non-profit branch of Sail Cargo, and she was in charge of the Trees for Seas reforestation program. So she told me about this project and that they were building this epic ship and um, I was uh, really getting into sailing at that moment and I decided to come and visit the project, check it out and I totally fell in love with it and uh, it took me almost a year to be able to get into the project and, and to collaborate and then around a year ago I started uh, working here doing video, documenting and, and sharing uh, the work that is being done here with the rest of the, of the world. But my main interest of being here was always to be involved with construction um, because I am a product designer and uh, everything here, it's like a creative, you know, playground. Um, so I really wanted to be part of, of the construction team and I was able to uh, switch over to, to the team. Yeah, now I'm starting to help with the new building and some general construction and hopefully we'll be able to get involved with the work uh, being done for the ship soon. What do you think about the project? I mean, a lot of people would have said in the beginning, oh, just dreamers. I, I think that you definitely need to believe in your dreams and chase them you know work hard and manifest your dreams because that's how I got here you know uh, it was always since I'm since I was a kid I was always fascinated by the idea of sailing on a tall ship you know like traditional like the old pirates used to do it you know sailing the Caribbean and this uh, idea of being a sailor and trading and the cargo you know it just fascinated me and it was always like a it felt like just a dream, you know, when I was growing up. But now, as soon as I found out that they were building this ship here, it was like, whoa, it's, I mean, it's not, a, it's not a dream anymore. It feels like tangible, you know, and it's in my home country and I'm, I need to be there, you know, I need to, to be part of that. I want to be on that ship. 
you know, like hard work and believing, believing in your dreams and it just happens. It's going to manifest, you know. So the fact that I'm here, for me, it feels that it's not just about dreamers, you know, like everything starts with a dream. But if you work hard and, and you keep your positive mentality, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be attracted, you know, it's going to come to you. It's going to manifest. So I think that this, this project is the proof of that, that a great idea can bring together great minds and um, really good intentions will always bring good things. Yeah, that's what I think. And I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> I'm happy for you too, Alfredo. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pura vida! Yeah, pura vida! Let's do it? Yeah, let's do it! Uh, what is your background, Sophie? How <laughs> do you, did you end up here? So, I started studying boat building in Basque Country. And after I went to Maine, for three months in the apprenticeship and there somebody spoke to me about the project and it was three years ago, I think. And now I'm here and really happy. I am arrived four months ago now, working on the boat. Do you remember your first arrival over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to don't remember because everybody is just around the table and you feel not really comfortable the first time you arrived. <laughs> but it was really, really, really good. The boat is huge and really pretty so it was good what is a cool thing in your mind about this area what impressed you the most i think it's more about the community than just the fact we are all here for the same reason doing our best rocking and just sleeping not so good <laughs> It's kind of a mission. What does this project mean personally to you? It's more about having a job what I like. Because it's really hard where I live to find a job. Like for me, really what is mean it's just having the job what I, I love to do. But that's, that's the point. Like here, it's because we are all together every day, all the time, eating together, not sleeping together, but like really close all the time. And just doing the same thing for not the same reason, I guess. Like we have all our background and coming from a lot of different places. Like that, it's a good mission. Um, do you still have a mom? What would she tell the people ashore what you're doing right now? I think she's a worried mom. So I think she's just happy for me because she knows how happy I am to be here. But like every all worry mum. I think she just wants I, I go back to her, I guess. When you think uh, five years into the future and you look back, what will you tell about this project? What will you say for your personal experience? What hmm. grows in you? <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to be a biggest part of my life because I have to go back in March and I really hope in five years I will be able to say Oh, I was part of this project for a while and it was really, really important for me and not just a break on my life, but really long time. I just hope I'm going to stay more and feel important in this project. What is your daily work about? With what do you start when you come to the shipyard? Mm. I mean, you're here at six, you're having first breakfast, first 6 breakfast, 30. yeah. Yeah. Uh, then you start? Yeah. So this week I was responsible of the breakfast, for the first breakfast. So the first thing I do is make a fire. And, and after at 6.30 I'm going on the boat and I just keep going. Now I'm, I am on a huge piece of wood. I am doing a big wall between the outside and the inside of the boat. I don't know exactly the name of this this part mm -hmm. and it's just sweating and <laughs> and dirty but it's good job what are you doing i build it like the pieces are already prepared out of the boat and we bring on the boat trying to cut to to be able to fit perfectly in the in the boat it's really strong timber so yeah, yeah, yeah it's really strong yeah, yeah but i like when the the piece it's on the floor it's easy but instead of that i need a lot of yes. help, like nobody can do that by himself. It's heavy, dirty work and you still like it? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a boring job. It's a, a good job. And it's fun and... You're feeling good and not stressed. And not stressed at all. I mean, maybe some, but I don't. <laughs> I have the feeling nobody is No, I don't stressed. think... Yeah, yeah, no, they no, no, all no. love their work and they keep the passion and the mood yeah. really high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, if you don't like the work, it's just not possible because we... Like, we... We're definitely not doing that for the money. Um, so I think it's just because of love of this project. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to add something? Pura vida! That's Thank you! <laughs>